Okay guys, we're gonna be doing um, our photo enhancement of our new theme in Adobe Fresco, which I can't see, okay. So Adobe Fresco is this app right here, this FR that I'm moving around. So that's the app we're going to be using. Uh, so when we open it, it actually looks like this. You're going to be picking from this area here where it says start a new document. I actually want you to pick the second option, or I think it is the second option. It says current screen size. So I'll do that one more time. So out of this options here, I'm gonna go current screen size. And let it bring you to the screen. So now if you pinch your fingers, it will make the canvas smaller. If you enlarge your fingers, it will zoom in. Um, you have all the tools that are here on the left. And then you have your layers that are here on the right. Um, it's gonna be a little hard for me to show you exactly where to press because I don't have an arrow. So I'll just use this little circle to kind of help like guide your eye. This circle is not needed on your canvas. It's used kind of for other tools, like shortcuts. So you could kind of just like drop it off the side of the canvas. I keep, there's something on my iPad. I keep trying to move it. All right, so these are your brushes. You have pixel brushes which are going to give you more painterly looks. So if you look at a, I just selected an option. If you look at a pixel brush, that was a charcoal one in particular. It's very gritty on the edges. If I drop down to the third brush option, these are vector brushes, which are more like illustrator based. So the top line is a pixel brush. The bottom line is a vector brush. You notice the edges of the line is very clean on a vector brush and it's very pixelated and spotty on a pixel brush. So the top option of brushes is gonna give you more painterly. So when you have to go back, you have to hit the arrow that's next to the word. So charcoal, you see right at the top. I don't know if I could even show you. Uh, so right here by this word charcoal, I would hit the arrow to go back to the options. And then I can go and find other types of paint. So see, pixel brush is gonna give you those gritty edges, whereas the third brush option down is gonna be more of those illustrator, clean vector brushes that we used in. Um, Adobe, I actually forgot which one does what. Adobe Draw. So Adobe Draw was the Illustrator-based program, and Adobe Sketch was the Photoshop. Okay, if we go to the third option down, I mean, sorry, the second option down, so you can just hit the X to shut this down. I'm going to make this a little larger. So the second option of brushes in this left side are the live brushes. So you have the choice of using watercolor. watercolor or oil, and the whole point of the live brushes is that they actually mix in live time. So if I put a black, a black blob here of watercolor, and then I change this color to red, and I actually, so down here, the water droplets, if you want it to blend a lot, you need to raise the water flow all the way up. If you don't want it to blend at all, you would bring it down. If you want it somewhere in the middle, put it in the middle. So I actually want it to blend a lot, so I'm gonna raise the water flow. And if you notice, watch the red into the black, you see how it starts to smudge. Like right in there, you see the smudge happening. But now if I change the water flow and I raise it down, I'm gonna do it on this side here, you're gonna notice that that water flow, see how the edge of the black inside the red did not smudge as much as it did in here? That's because I changed the water flow. You could change your opacity with this color square, so the flow can change there. The numbers here are your brush size, so you go up and down. The color wheel is the circle of color, so you would, you could drag this around to change the color, but then you could also move the dot in the middle to change the value of the color. You also get this opacity bar as well. This will change the flow also. So the live brushes are really awesome because you can, um, so again, if my water flow is up, I'll change the color and I'm able to blend right in action. So this is a watercolor blend and you'll see it starts to like fuzz out inside. Now let's say I wanna blend this a little more. If I use this finger right here, this little finger, so it's highlighted blue now, this actually allows me to blend even more so. So I'm tapping on the area 
where I just did So if you notice, you could kind of change the way this blends with the smudge brush. So if you press the finger, it gives you different types of media that you would actually be smudging. So if I go to paint, it gives you different types of um, different types of paint paint that you would want to smudge. This is just the smudger. This little finger is a smudger. So um, I'm gonna just kind of pick any type right now. I just want you to see. So like if I go right, so you see my finger where it's swirling. So it's going to actually, the smudge finger will smudge the material there um, in a manner that the material would actually do. So it really matters like what you're trying to go for, for the smudge to make sure you pick the correct material. But now look at this. If I wanted to smudge this, um, this vector line that I made using my vector brush, the, the third option down. Um, it will not let me, you cannot smudge over vector brushes. So this finger smudge tool right here, this one, does not work with these brushes, the third option down. Because they're vector, they don't let you get those gritty, these gritty, uh, like the gritty edges that come here, like right here on the sides. That's only allowed with pixels. So you could only use the smudge finger with the top two brush options. Um, what else can I show you? This is the lasso tool, what I just selected right there. So the lasso, if I want to cut something, I would draw a selection with my finger. And then at the bottom here, you see that it says close lasso. That means that my shape wasn't closed well. So I'm actually going to close it so that it highlights the entire shape. Now I can press the word transform down here and it will let me actually, oh, Hold on one second. Oh, I'm, I wasn't on the right layer. I was like, what just happened? So I was trying to lasso this black and red shape, but because my layer wasn't highlighted, it did not respond. So I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna hit close lasso at the bottom because my shape wasn't closed. Now, if I hit transform because I'm on the right layer, it will actually allow me to change the size using the little circles. I could even flip it over by just bringing it up and down. I can move it by dragging it around with my finger. So you can do things like that. You just press done in the top right corner. But you could also, if you hit transform at the top here, uh, right up top here, you can flip these as well if you, if you needed to do that with any of your designs. So you press done. Um, when you want to take away the lasso, you could press deselect lasso. Don't worry so much about the masking tool that this allows you to do. So if you notice, um, there's a masking tool. That's something a little bit le you know, a little bit more complex that we're not going to get into right now. Um, but if you wanted to erase a certain part, you could actually use the lasso and then just press the erase word, and it will lasso just those areas. And if you need to go back or forward, your arrows are up top here. Um, okay. So that's the lasso tool. This is your paint bucket. So if you wanted to drop a paint color, you could drop them in actual shapes that you draw. So notice how I just tapped inside the lasso that I drew and it painted it. If I tap inside this green shape right here, which is on that layer, so I had to re-highlight the layer I was using. If I tap inside the, um, It will, it will color fill. It has to be a shape though. Uh, this down here is your shape tool. Okay, so you would size it. It only lets you do what's available. So you have only three basic shapes, a circle, polygon, and square. You could use these tools down here to do what you need to do with it. So fill it, it will fill with the color that's in your color wheel. So you can kind of just like fill and then move and then fill and then move. So if you wanted to use the shape tools for help, for things that is there. If you want to put text, you would do the T. You tap your screen. Once you press the T, you tap your screen. You could size this with the dots as well. You double click and it lets you type. 
Um, and then it also gives you all these tools on the side. Remember, guys, these tools here on the, on the right are always here for every layer. They're the little lines with the dots. So, like, I would click the layer that I want, and then I can open up the tools of just that layer. So, if I wanted to lower the opacity of the layer here that is outlined, I would just click the dots here of that layer. So, I can do the same with this one. Okay, those dots with the circles is a really useful tool. If you want, if you needed to move your layers, it's the stack of papers right up here at the top that moves them on and off. If you want to move all your tools, it's these arrows in the corner. It's very similar to our Adobe Draw and Sketch. Uh, if you needed to flip your page, you can go to your, um, it, your canvas. You could go to the little wheel and you could kind of reverse this as many times as you want. You could flip it to the other side. So there's those options as well. Uh, what else should I tell you guys? Oh, color swatching. So we're all going to be bringing a photo in here. So this is the most important part. 